Uh, we show the church today, amen, and the grace and the ability that God's given us to declare the word of God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I love having children in the house of God. Make, make the church feel alive. Amen. amen. Praise God. So on today, uh, we solicit your prayers today. Just got back from the, the midwinter. We had a wonderful time. Amen. And uh, the midwinters and nationals have changed to the point where they offer great information, amen, about what God is doing. Uh, today, praise the Lord, is actually uh, the first Sunday, March 1st, amen, in 2009, when I actually preached my first sermon as pastor of Praise Temple. Amen. Um, I say amen. Amen. So actually, uh, as you see that the weather is so unpredictable, because I'm going to tell you what happened that day. What happened that day was my family came up for the weekend, and they had to leave immediately following the service, because uh, after I was installed pastor on uh, we didn't have a leap year that year, but um, I got installed on February 28th, and it, which was a Saturday, and they were expecting 12 to 15 inches of snow that night. So my brothers could not stay over. They left, and, and it snowed. It snowed so much that um, does anybody remember? I used to have that big red four-wheel drive truck. Anybody remember sure. that red truck? Yeah. Uh, I got that stuck in my driveway. That's how much snow it was. And now it's what, balmy 50 degrees outside? <laughs> so the weather in, March, in January and February is unpredictable. So that's why we have services in March. Amen? Amen. But uh, I'm celebrating today because God has blessed me to be here 11 years. Come on, let's give God praise for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, not praise for me, let's give God praise for that. Come on, open up. Come on, tell God, thank you. Now, come on, tell God, thank you another time. So on today, we might also remind you that uh, we do want to finish up so you get you a buttery breakfast biscuit, and then we're going to go on at 3 o'clock and be a pastor of oils this afternoon, so pray amen. for us, amen. But the question I want to talk to you today, amen, or ask you, uh, or let you know my name is in the book, amen? amen? Look at somebody say, my name's in the book. My name's in the book. Amen. Uh -huh. You're already getting happy, aren't you? Uh -huh. Look at somebody say, my name's in the book. My name's in the book. Let us turn to Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Amen. 10, 20. Amen. Somehow. 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 I got to make this journey somehow. Shaking on my track. Trying to hold me back. But I got to make this journey somehow. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Let's say that again. 
notwithstanding in this rejoice time, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You may have a seat in the house of God. Amen? Amen. On today, praise God, uh, all I want to talk about is your name written in the book. Uh-huh. It's your name written in the book. Today, praise God, as uh, I was looking to think about or pray and ask the Lord what he wanted me to say to the church to encourage you, he just wanted you to have a point of reference today is your name in the book. Amen. The writer Luke here, Jesus is talking to the disciples. Amen. This particular passage of scripture comes right after Luke 10 and 19 where God, after the disciples had gone out, God empowered them two by two by 70 to go here and there and, and preach and teach the gospel, healing those that go, but he warned them those who don't receive them, shake the dust off the boots as a testimony against them. Amen? Amen? And after they come back, praise God, and they're, they're, they're so happy that the devil is subject to him. Amen. To Amen. them. Amen. The devil subject to you. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. I said the devil is subject to you. Amen. Because you are possessors of a power that is greater than him. Uh-huh. Come on. Have a witness in the house today? Amen. Wave your hands. You got the Holy Ghost in the house today. Amen. Praise God. That means, praise God, you, the devil, got to do what you say. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, so, 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 we have to know we got power, church. Power. Amen. We have to know, praise God, as great as he that's in me, the he that's in this world. I have to know, praise God, that I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. I have to know, praise God, hallelujah, that I'm the head and not the tail. Amen. I'm the lender and not the ball. I have yeah. to know and have to walk in that way, praise Amen. God. But I am who God called me to be. Yeah. Amen. What has God called us to be, church? He's called us to be a royal priesthood. Yeah. He's called us to be a holy nation. Yeah. He's called us to be a peculiar people. Yeah. He's called us to be a chosen generation. On, and he's called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Come on, Come on somebody. Yeah. Honey, and because he's done that, you ought to be glad about it. Praise yeah. God. Because I'm going to show forth the praises of him that brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. Yeah. Somebody need to put your hands together and shout hallelujah. Look at somebody say he's 
already done enough. He's already, already done, done enough. enough. What are you talking about, preacher? Look, he woke you up this morning. Yes. Yes. Come on, that's enough because somebody yes. didn't get up this morning. Yes. Amen. He started you on your way. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. Though sometimes you don't get to just hop up out the bed no more. Sometimes you got to ease out the bed and just put your feet on straight street. Come on, somebody. Yes. Right? You put your feet on the side of the ground. And before you think about pushing up out the bed, you got to say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Let's see these old knees and these old hips going to work today. And when you rise up out of bed, you say, Lord, I thank you. It might have a little pain. Come on, somebody. It might have a little creaking. Come on, somebody. But you got you got a praise on your lip huh? and thankfulness in your heart. Huh? That's what it means to serve the Lord with gladness. Huh? Come before his presence with singing. Huh? You know you got to be a God. Huh? It is he that has made us huh? and not we ourselves. Huh? That's what I think about when I lift up out of that bed. I might not have everything, but I got some things I got to go through, but I'm so glad that the psalmist said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be here today, I wouldn't have what I had, but I thank God, hallelujah, for what I do have, anybody glad about what you already got, come on, clap those hands, and give God some praise. disciples, let me share something with you. You got the first step, huh? but there's always another step. Look at somebody say, there's always another step in God. There's always another step in God. Huh? See, what God does huh, is that God gives you something huh, to help you take step to step. Huh? Paul said it like this. Huh? We go from glory to glory. Huh? We go from faith to faith. Huh? The just shall live by the faith. Huh? What is he talking about? Huh? At every level of faith, huh? though it may be a trial, huh? when I get going at that level, huh? God puts joy in my heart. God puts a purpose in my spirit. So at whatever level of faith I'm at, God gives me joy unspeakable and full of glory. But when a New Testament trial comes, I got to use that joy and that faith at that level to help me sustain at the next level. And when I get to the next level, God's going to raise my joy level. You need to look at somebody right now. It's time to raise your joy level in God. How do you raise your joy level? By going through trials and temptations. Going through circumstances and situations that your spirit may say, Yeah, no, I walk through the valley of a shadow death. I will fear no evil, for that art with me. I'm so glad that God brought me out. We can sing a song, He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. Hallelujah. And He put me a song in my heart to say, A song of His praises. Hallelujah. See, hallelujah. Turn my monitor down a little bit. 
it. And God is telling us today that you got to get your heart. I mean, the psalmist said, my heart is fixed, oh God. My heart is fixed. You're trying to help somebody to let them know that you got to keep your eyes on the prize. Hallelujah. What is the prize? Hallelujah. The prize is heaven itself. Because the Bible says, I have not seen. Can you turn my monitor down? I have not seen. Ears have not heard. You have it in the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for us. That means no matter how great you think God is, and no matter how great you think heaven is, no matter what comes to your imagination, no matter what comes to your mind, you haven't even made it to the ground level. What heaven has for you? You ain't made it to the best basement. You ain't where you below the basement. <laughs> Praise him. Can you turn my monitor down, please? Hallelujah. God is trying to help somebody. Thank you, sir. Because we want to focus on the present thing. But the Bible declares that we got to look up for our redemption. It's strong now. Hallelujah. Sorry, so often you know you find yourself when you get some bad news. You do what? You, you know, look up and see, God, we are coming back. God, we are going to take us out of here. God, we are going to change me. But see, you can't say that if your name's not written in the book. You got to understand somebody. We even when you go to the hotel, it's something that you won't get a room if you have not made a reservation. The first thing they ask for when you get to the hotel. What is your name? They don't ask what travel agency you made it through. They don't ask, praise God, if you did it on the phone or you did it online. What they ask is for your name. And then they ask for some money. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But the thing I'm probably going to understand, they my name is written there. I got, no matter how many other people that have called after me, I got a place set up for me. I got for me. I got a room ready for me. Well, I'm trying to let you know where your name is written in the last book of life. Hallelujah. I got a reservation and I plan on making that reservation because my name is written in the book. I don't plan on being late. I would love to be early. I don't plan on missing it. I plan on occupying it because my name is written in the book. You better make Today is the day 
You need to set your reservation. Today is the day that you make a decision. Hallelujah. To give your life to Christ. And hallelujah. And forsake. And renounce. And turn your back to everything that's not like God. You might say, Pastor, I can't do it. Well, guess what? I guess you can afford to miss heaven. Come on, somebody. We have anybody here that can afford to miss heaven. I ain't trying to miss heaven. I'm trying to go somewhere where the streets of pain would go. I'm trying to go somewhere where there's joy everlasting and beyond measure. I'm trying to go somewhere where God is always with us. No more bills. Come on, somebody. No more phone bills. No more light bills. No more cable bills. Come on, somebody. God's trying to help us today to realize that he's made a way when there is
you're going to get it back. Come on, somebody. See, you're scared to go and get your stuff back because you won't raise your hand and open your mouth. I told the church a few weeks ago, this is praise temple. I said, if you ain't giving God praise, there's the door. But guess what? If you love giving God praise, because when the praise is gone, yeah, I want to use it, the blessing still comes down. When the praise go up, the windows of heaven open up and pour out. See, you learn how the praise them and everybody around you is praising them. When you get by yourself, you won't cuss them out. You won't fuss them out. You might just say, hallelujah. I'm talking about the devil riding with you next to me. When they fuss at you, you say, well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah. Aren't you mad at me? Yeah, but I'm going to let God handle that. I'm going to keep on driving. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not careful with this light, you too, I might step out of the car and give him a step too. Yeah. Right. Come on, somebody. See, praise God. It don't make no sense. That's right. But guess what? I told you last week, praise God. It takes the exact same amount of effort to complain as it does to pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know why it's this bad. Well, praise God, Lord, hallelujah, I don't know why it's that good. See, same amount of energy, you get nothing from complaining. But God has already said, where two or three are gathered together in his name, he has the ability to step down in. So you need to take all your energy and stop complaining and start giving God praise. Come on, clap those hands up and rejoice to the Lord.
try it one more time. Is that all right? Because the main thing about God's work is about redemption. God knows how to tell us about ourselves, but then God gives us open to get it right. Hallelujah. So I'm going to take about another 10 seconds to give you a chance. Come on, somebody, to authorize your reservation. Now open your mouth and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.
to God. I don't care what you do. Jesus nailed it to his cross. Stop listening to the lies of the devil. What you done? The bill's been paid. Stop listening to the lies of the devil. You a man of God. You a preacher. You a teacher. You an evangelist. Come on, somebody. You a worship leader. You a musician. Stop listening to the lies of the devil. You belong to God. Your name is written in the book. I said your name is written in the book.